Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. Well, how are you today? It is episode number 36, and we welcome you again to the Subiquitous Podcast. We have had more fun with this thing than we probably should, but I was warned, and someone told me at Blistem, you know, my favorite conference that I've talked about many times during the episodes, that this would almost become like a drug to me, that I would actually go, oh my goodness, it's time to do an episode again, and I'd go, yay! But I gotta tell you, today was a little different, a little tiny different in that I've been struggling just a tad to stay away from the political side of life right now, and I've tried very hard to keep my head and my mind and my soul all stayed on truth and on the gospel of Jesus. And that seems to get me through a lot of the political mayhem in the world right now. So I've been often criticized, I guess is a word, um, in in a good way. Sue, you hardly ever talk about politics on your podcast. Exactly right. I don't want to go there. That's not the format for this podcast. But I will say this. It's really hard sometimes not to formulate opinions and ideas and for those of you that try to figure out what I'm all about when it comes to that, I will proudly tell you, yes, I am a conservative, and yes, I do believe in Jesus Christ, and yes, I am pro-life, so if I've lost you over all of that, then I'm really sorry. (laughs) But in the meantime, I struggled sometimes, not all the time, but just a little bit on where to go on an episode. And so today, I kind of have gone back and forth with Jeff on this. Uh, We're going to just call this episode Knowing. Capital K-N-O-W-I-N-G, knowing. And how many of you know that knowing about something and then knowing something or uh, knowing about someone or, or knowing someone are two completely different things? Well, it really does apply also to our relationship with Jesus. I know a lot of friends. I have a lot of family members. I have a lot of colleagues in in all kinds of different dimensions of career that know a lot about Jesus. In fact, they will stand to, you know, attention and they'll they'll stick to their guns and and repeat scripture and they know about him. But I got to tell you something, I don't know about their relationship with Jesus. And there's a big difference between knowing about someone and knowing them. And so it's kind of like what Christ really wants us to have. Yes, he wants us to have a knowledge about him and about his teachings, but much more than that, he wants to know who we really are. And so in this episode, I'm going to use some examples to show the difference between knowing about Jesus and truly knowing him, and maybe even up front, right from the very beginning, knowing about Jeff Duffield is a whole lot different than knowing him. And I, I got to tell you, some of you are going to be surprised just a little bit, but um, the man I'm married to is also very protected. He's guarded. He has he has become greatly respected in his peer group, but there's a lot of things that people don't know about him, and I surely want to tell the world. How about that? <laughs> I wonder if he's listening. Oh, anyway. he's here. Oh, he's here? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's very much here. See? That's true. Have you ever had the feeling... <laughs> The sense of foreboding <laughs> that you're being set up. No, I no, and I'm setting my the own sword self. of Damocles, as it uh, were, hanging over Dam- my head. Well, I have been reading. This is not how in our production meeting. Oh, <laughs> at the Slim Chickens restaurant. Oh, Slim Chickens, while I was eating. This is not how it came. Those down. wonderful chicken nug. What well, they don't call them chicken nuggets. What are they? Chicken fingers. Tenders chicken oh they are so that you good had. i want to i really want to be a spokesperson for slim chickens i really do we'll see what we can do i'll see what we can work that out but that's this direction yeah <laughs> this trip down the lane here is not <laughs> quite how you well, set it up over there in the booth well, in the far corner like of i slim said chickens. a lot can change and just the time that you think you know me well you know i can change my mind well that's <laughs> been a foregone conclusion oh. for 
nigh unto these 46 plus years. Yeah, and that is my right. That is my right. That Says I, who? Well, that I don't ever want you to figure me out. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> there, you're in no danger of that happening. Oh. oh. All right, so here we go. Let oh, me, boy. Let's just say I'm going to throw some questions at you. Okay. All right, and I'm going to answer them for you first. Oh, well, the, oh, that's good. Is that okay? Well, I'm used to that. I know. <laughs> and then I want you to say if I'm right or wrong. <sighs> Can I do that? Is that all right? I'm, I'm, I'm just hang with me a second. As okay. I talk here, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about unintended consequences. <laughs> no, it's not bad. It's not something none that of this a lot of folks bad. don't think about. No, you know, well, they just don't consider the unintended consequences. So I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. So okay. And, I mean, you know, the worst we can do is I can hit the stop button. Right, so. and we can always or edit me out. Or maybe that's the best I can do. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Well, okay. and it's not, but I'm just, we're going to get a little personal here. That's a why more, I'm thinking I'm yeah. going to move my hand no, over no, no. near the stop button. A little more personal than just knowing about both you and I, for that matter. Yeah, okay. Okay? Because that's what a podcast should do. It should bring out the best and bring out the worst. The exuberance is all over the Yes, room. so that those that are listening will either feel really good about themselves mm. and... Because they know somebody else is worse off than them. Or, <laughs> well, they're, they're about to find that out. Or we're all in this thing together, correct? We're, we're in, in this, this love together. together. Ding, 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 okay, go okay. ahead, question, so, question person. Go all ahead. All right. Uh, my guess George is. George Fenneman. And if you know who that is. Okay. If you could have changed anything oh, about Lord. the way your education structure was as a child and as a preteen and a teenager, if you could have changed anything in that, what would that have been? And I'm going to answer it first and then see if I'm, see if I'm right. Now you can be funny with it if you want. Oh, it's funny. All right. <laughs> Besides wanting to take a course in mad magazineology. <laughs> no. Uh, mad, mad magazineology. magazineology. <laughs> No. I gotta admit to you, that's a new one. <laughs> that's a new one, man. Magazine. Uh, well, hang on a minute. Here. I got a pencil. Are you gonna write it down? I am gonna write that <laughs> down. Because <laughs> I don't want to. You know, we've gotten to the stage of life where we say things that we break us up, and five minutes later, we, oh, can't we forget. Remember we say, what, well, what, we if, said. "Well, we did that the other day. We were with Jeff and Linda Pearls in the in the we car, did. We and did. we were having a hilarious conversation. We did. And I said to you, with him in the front." seat and Linda and I in the back and I said to you exactly like this I said oh that would be a great episode of a podcast and yep. for the life of us I know we cannot remember I know. And what that was we were talking about and we're too lazy to call them and say what were we talking of course they may not be any well, better off I was than us say, they're not too far behind us age wise no. so they might not remember that's either. true I have it written down. Okay, so you wrote down. Let me put this under the heading. Mad magazine. No, this is Susie Ism. (laughs) Susie Ism. (laughs) Since we're since we're creating words here, Susie Isms. All right, Mad Magazineology. Yeah, you got me. Okay, Okay. go ahead. But I think this is just the question. All right, my opinion since I've known you since I've been thirteen. Mad Magazine. Okay, if there's one thing you could have changed about your education either as a uh, a young person is this or what i would have changed or yes w- w- what most of my teachers would well, have changed. most of your teachers would have hoped that you would have read a book once in a while <laughs> i know that no 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 <laughs> no i read books yeah you know you that read, you but, know but, that yeah but you didn't read books on geometry no gosh and you didn't read books on english literature no so what read, books did I, you read i read dune in my sci-fi class. And, okay. Oh, you know, I didn't realize you did that. Okay. See, once again. And I know you'd loved history, so you read yes. that. There, see. But I haven't have answered the heard, question yet. We we will shortly. Okay. Hang hang tight, folks. <laughs> just let me just jump in this rabbit trail for just a couple of feet, and then we'll back out. <laughs> um, you you back in the day in our glorious education system. Yes. Forty. 7, 48 years, almost 50, Mm -hmm. Jesus help me, 50 years ago when I was in high school, almost that long, um, they came up with this English class 
And it reminds me of the Bill Cosby bit that he used to do. We're talking about slow class. Slow class, yeah, yeah of course. Slow. It's well, a great, great comedy. As I, it got into my like final year or two of, of high school. And of course, by that time, I knew what I was going to do. So I was just like, let's get this over. Um, one of the selections was sci fi in science fiction reading. Right. And I thought, well, <laughs> I can get through that. <laughs> so I, <laughs> that was my English course. To You had to. You had to have a couple of years of English, which I already got under my belt. And then, then you could, you know, it was an elective. So yeah. I, I chose that. And we read and did a book report on the, on the Dune series, wow. D-U-N-E. Did you get a good grade? I believe I did because it was a fascinating story. It was it not got a, your attention. Oh, very much so okay. in those days. It was not a, I couldn't tell you hardly anything about it other than there was a lot of sand. <laughs> can't, can't but that's also it. 47 years ago. I know, I understand. But it was... um. It was a very entertaining book, and, and it was a big book, big paperback book. Yeah. And um, anyway, so we'll back out of that and go back to. Okay, so the question, your question again, was, how would I change things? What would you, and education wise, what you would have changed? What now, here's my I thought. Have ch- go, go ahead. Think, yeah, that's right. We have to get your thoughts. That's thought right. First. My yes. thoughts, and then you can either affirm or deny. Keep in, keep in mind, I have pencil in hand and okay. a legal pad All right. at the ready. Affirm or deny what yes. I'm about to say, and okay. then you yes. take the same question uh-huh. and you uh-huh. say what I would have done differently education wise. And people are going to say, how in the world did they get married? <laughs> Go ahead. And then I will affirm or deny. Okay, go okay. ahead. So I would say yes. that you would have changed yes. going much more in a musical direction and probably would have gone from high school into a, which you didn't know existed, but you wanted to go into more of a jazz-oriented Berkeley School of Music kind of uh, direction rather than Curtis Institute like in Philadelphia or was more classically trained. I think you would have gone more, if you knew it, it existed back then, you would have gone that direction. Affirm or deny? That would be a firm. That okay. would be an affirmation. Okay. Yes, that's right. true. Um, I, I, You know, just our limited, I guess I didn't do any research on the internet. Well, there was no, no internet. Uh, I, <laughs> kind of my point. I know. I know. In 1972 or 73. Right. Um, but I do want to say this. I, after reading that question, yes, I will say to to those that are listening, yes, that Jeff, yes. because he didn't necessarily go in that direction immediately from high school, mm-hmm. you did in many years following teach yourself by also getting an orchestration course from Berkeley as well as working on your your desire and your talent, and so. And while you didn't really change, I mean, we don't have a music degree necessarily, but you have as much. I don't have the, uh, I've been told by right. those who do have have a degree, an acknowledged legal tender right. degree, I've been told that I'm able to, the things I'm able to do, um, the only thing I'm missing is the piece of paper the on piece the wall. The piece of paper on the wall. And that's that's correct. And there should be. And there has been I, I some. It s- sounds, pres- you know. No, no, but there are some universities that do give. Uh, what's that one that we heard that our friend life Fran, learning, life credit. learning. Um, yeah, I, I, I keep looking for them guys, but you, <laughs> you know, they're, <laughs> you, you know, they just don't hand out these no, things just because you walk in and say it's hi, true. and it usually before you're done the interview or before you're done looking, there's somewhere in there where they're going to write want you to write a check (laughs) well you know what if you were writing checks today you could probably get just about anything you want oh really (laughs) (laughs) do you know something about my bank account i don't know no hey we'd have to go rob a bank to do it but we'd we'd have a good time anyway yeah we would for a few minutes so let me ask you this question yes what would i have changed uh education why don't you ask yourself or (laughs) No, no, no. I'm not. I'm, said, you, I want to see what your your answer will be. What will your answer be for me? What will your answer be? Um, well, had other external and external. I can't. I talk today. Other <laughs> external forces had had full sway, as we like to say. Full sway. Yes. You, my dear. Would have uh, would have gone and and uh, probably got it. You, I think you were offered it uh, a scholarship to Immaculata College, 
and it would have been a basketball scholarship and you would have hooped your way through four years of school, <laughs> as they say. And you probably would have done very good at it. You were a good little basketball player in the back in the day. Well, I wasn't great, but it was okay. I didn't say you were great. No. I said you were a good little basketball yeah. player. But it's interesting, yes, and, and I and I affirm I probably would have gone and, and it's not that I would have changed that because I surely don't regret one single However, decision. The 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 unanswerable question for the ages is had you proceeded to you know, go that route. Had I gone to Boston, which is where Berkeley School of Music is located, right, and pursued that, our paths would have never. I would have meshed. probably never seen you again. No, that's true. And who knows? We would have written rewritten history. Ah, <laughs> boy, you imagine what our kids would look like. <laughs> you would probably be. Oh, I knowing knowing you, you would probably be a, a high school gym teacher with a whistle around your neck. Yes, that's probably well. No, I'd be retired with a nice pension right about now, well, and I could do ministry on the side. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> that's yeah. okay. And I would be, uh, gosh, I'd probably be playing cocktail piano in some bar somewhere. Oh no, that would be and awful. saying, "Hey, look at me! Hey. I got a degree from Berkeley School of Music. <laughs> Listen to this chord." I know. I don't. And there's a song that years ago we used to sing <laughs> called I Don't Regret a Mile. That's Surely right. this episode is not about regrets. Of, no. And no. we have traveled a lot of them together. Yeah. It's say. not about regrets, but it is not a bad idea as we as we get older. And some of the things that I experienced. I, mean, I don't know that I would have done that. But again, as I was, as I was thinking earlier, when I was in high school, all that I understood and based on my piano teacher and his background was if you're going to further study in music, you would go to Curtis in Philadelphia, um, possibly apply for Juilliard in New right. York City, which would right. have been probably a little. I I didn't devote myself enough to classical music. I was going to say, well, not only that, you, you would have had to there. have really good grades, too, to get into that. I, I guess. <laughs> and if you play good enough, they'll take your grades. Oh. <laughs> they'll look the well, you know true. that yeah, yeah and you, you get some tutoring on the side with eastman, your yeah. mad magazineology <laughs> <laughs> eastman uh it was, wasn't eastman in new york up in rochester new eastman york eastman is in rochester new york and then what's that the is one correct. is it peabody down in baltimore peabody is in baltimore that yeah, is correct those were the ones that were suggested to me and i'll be quite honest about it no disrespect or deflection upon classical musicians yeah, because you actually did pretty well at that well i st- I, I enjoyed playing it. It helped me quite a bit in technique development, but I did not see myself as a classical musician. No, um, right. which is which was kind of the maybe narrow-minded, closed-minded opinion that I had of the whole scene. Um, but but you come from uh, you know your your first cousins. I know are all classical musicians, and they're great musicians, and they're great ones. So yeah. it wouldn't have been unusual. No. For you to have gone in that direction. No, I just did um, not. But my, my cousins uh, are symphony players. Yeah. And, of course, that's a little bit easier to be a, a symphony player if you play in the viola section or the horn section. Uh, pia- because piano, you, the, you, most symphonies don't use piano on a regular basis. They Piano is more of a solo instrument. You don't see it as much in, in symphonies when they're playing as orchestra work you don't see the piano featured at all right. unless there was a soloist yeah and i did not see my i i just was not that intrigued with classical music to devote i mean you gotta you know you're talking day-long practice sessions to be able to play that kind of music well enough to to perform with symphonies and and i just sure didn't see it but anyway, other forms of music, that was different. Well, and then here's the thing, and I want to talk about a little bit about you can know music and you can know it well and know about it. Mm-hmm. But then there's another part that a lot of the, I would call the really the gifted and talented, that understand that it becomes part of you. It becomes a lifestyle. And one thing we've learned, Jeff, through this a pandemic and for the year 2020 and even going into 2021 uh our music will our music or at least the music that we do and the music that we love to do and that comes from our heart and comes from our our gifts and talents i promise you this 
it's pretty hard to shut that down. Yep. And I, even if we don't have venues, we have figured it out. We figured, okay, so we'll go wherever we can go on the internet <laughs> and we'll yep. figure out ways. And so yep. this is the thought that I had while compiling just this idea and theme of knowing is that in our, I mean, I knew you even at 13 and I knew that your desire and your heart was always to play. You had a, an incredible gift as a young man and then still carrying it on and learning as you go along, it becomes actually who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and even though our, you know, you don't want to really promote that and say, well, you know, without gifts and talents, we don't have the anointing. That's not true at all. I mean, we, we know that you're an anointed person regardless of your gift and regardless of your talent, but we've watched how God has used you uh, in many, many specific ways as a calling and using your gift for the Lord. And so that has pretty much been silenced on a public venue side, but yet look at you. You're for still now. Yeah, for now. And like I say, well, you're still well, you're still going through. Has it been though? Well, no. Because, not for us is what I'm saying. Well, but that's for what I'm some saying, it because has. well, it may be in a physical form of actually going right. around the country to different churches and, right. and opportunities. However, as you've compiled in your your notes right. uh, what our live stream our you know, and even our podcast, but of course we don't do much music on air. But on our live stream, the the amount of people who have seen oh, I know. It's, pieces, it's if nothing else, of our live stream, right. we would we could travel for another forty five years like right. we've done, uh, and still not play music in front of that many people as we've done in just what, eight months. That's true. So that that's, that's right. crazy when you think about it. All right. And we could not see that in 1975. No. And there's so much that just accelerated that I, you know, and Oh, no doubt. I, so I'm so also I'm I'm overwhelmed at times in a good way. I don't mean this in a bad way necessarily, but I feel like we just lived through almost 10 years instead of 1 year where yeah. we've been greatly accelerated oh, to yeah, think about our yeah. future even more, to think about the financial part, to think about the creativity part, to think about where the direction of Christian music in itself is going, yep. let alone worship music, let alone any kind of genre, which we love doing all kinds of styles of Christian music. And also, we love the classics. We love the great American standards as well. Right. And where is where are we all going with it, and how is it reaching an audience? But I do have another question, number two, for you. Oh, I'm sure you had more and than one. You can, yes, and you can say affirm or deny. Okay. Okay. If okay. you could have lunch or dinner with any musical guest in history, past, present, or whatever, who would that be? Hmm. Okay. What? Give me your answer. Well, I I actually have a couple of them because. Okay. Uh, Okay. One you you already kind of met in a way, but you really didn't have a lot of opportunity to sit with him. So I am going to say, see, I don't know. I I I'm 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 going back and <laughs> I'm forth because I I really am going to go. I'm really going to dig this one out. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say Henry Mancini. Hmm. That's interesting. Now that might not be the top one. No. But I thought of all of the things that you've watched and then read in his um, orchestrating books and things that he has done over the years, I often have thought, wouldn't it have been great to have the two of you sit down and have a conversation? Yeah, that would have been interesting. I thought you meant more as a piano player. Oh, I didn't think fellow, about that. Fellow pianist. Well, he, he played the piano. Yes, he did. But he, uh, but but he I wasn't understand. really known. All right, so then I, I got bam, I got that one wrong. <laughs> See? I don't know you as well. <laughs> Knowing you, Jeffrey. No, 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 no. Knowing you. See, I don't know you as well as I thought. Evidently. There you go. Evidently. Uh, but there is another another one. Can I give a second? Can I give a second one then? Yeah. I, you can all be or, or one of my favorites. It's your podcast. You can give three <laughs> or four of them if you no, want. Um Oh yeah, and now his name just slipped out of my mind. Well, tell me what he looks like. Well, he was short. <laughs> <laughs> and he was kind of your idol growing up. You're talking about Larry Goss. Larry Goss. That's yeah, right. not necessarily a household name no. per se. Uh, and you know, I kind of have an affinity there because, you know, I, as you well know, I have played on enough recordings over the years. Someone, as a matter of fact, we got a recording sent to us not too long ago, and I can't tell you the name of it. it escapes me right at the moment, but it's here somewhere. Um, of a of a trio that I played on their album 
Oh, gosh. At least 40 years Barry ago. Barry and Tavia Dutton. No. Oh, I don't know. I'm just That was the name. first one I ever oh, okay. played on. And no, I, you, you always remember your first one. Okay. <laughs> you know, no, Barry and Tavia. And they're they're still both healthy and alive, down, living down in Florida, as a matter of fact. Well, Larry Goss is not well known, no, but he has La- produced. But, well, anyway, great saying about me, from Brooklyn I, Tabernacle, right? And, no, yeah. me, I'm just you know, I'm a session musician, so right. unless the credits are on the back of an album, or you're that kind of you're that kind of person that worries about that type of thing, you don't know too much about my name. And the same thing, you know, people in the music business. Uh, especially gospel music business. No, they are not going to know him. No, no, no. I'm saying people that are in the gospel. Oh, they music will. Business, yes. Oh, they. Yeah, yes. he's a legend, and uh, right. for all That's that he's true. a com- and very talented. Guy. Yeah, I met him two or three times since we moved to Nashville. Um, the most was the last time that I spent with him, but he was in the middle of a recording session, right, right. and I couldn't sit down and talk to him. I, I just would have loved to have seen. I would have loved to have had lunch or so, yes. or dinner with him, and sit down. He and I, right, and just. Talk shop, if you will. That's right. That, that would have been, I would have, yeah, I and would have then, learned some things about it. And yeah. then after dinner was over, invite Henry Mancini over for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway. who is the one person in my world, uh, past or present, that I would love to have as a music person as a dinner guest? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. No. Oh, no, oh, no. wait a minute. <laughs> that He's- would be, well... Well, that was musician. another episode. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You have to refer back. Yeah. No, not in sports. I in know, music. I know. Well, this I'm going to really step out here. Okay. Really take a risk. All right. Gino Vanelli. <gasps> See, I'm I'm much more transparent than you are. The whole you world knows I love Gino Vanelli. I've loved his music. You don't stop talking about this stuff once you get it in your head. <laughs> And you've had it in your head for 40 I years. Know. And I would just love to sit with him. And, you know, he has workshops about I his mind, music. I wouldn't mind sitting in with him as well I if know. he would talk about music. I don't, I don't really. I do have a second one. Okay. My second one would be Olita Adams to spend some time yeah, with her. Yeah, yeah. The, the two of them together, I mean, seriously, uh, their, their music is just beyond me. Well, what was just... interesting to me is the night we saw her live here in town, we, uh, we crashed the after we did concert crash the party. party. It yeah. was lovely. Yeah, I love crashing pe- parties that we're not invited to. <laughs> we, you were supposed to pay extra to have this Oops. backstage <laughs> meet and greet. Yeah, we didn't do it. We and do her it. husband, the drummer, <laughs> right. was standing outside the door and he was waving, know. you know, everybody in. And when you were in the ladies room, when you came out of the ladies room, I said, let's pretend like we're, you know. Yeah. yeah and we yeah. And we walked in there. I said, what's worse it going to do? They're going to throw us out. <laughs> and so we did and you had a a, a, a five minute meeting Just and i was a small little meeting. you shook her hand you were talking right to well, her well the very first thing i said to her which i knew would get her attention because anybody anyone that comes up to me and says you know i praise god for you know thank you for your music or i think you sing well those are nice things to be said but when someone comes up to me and says this there was an anointing on your life tonight and I, I just sensed it. And even though you're singing your music, you're singing jazz music, and then eventually you sang a couple gospel tunes tonight. Can I tell you? I get it. Well, she was in a secular venue. She even was in a secular did, venue, but she is she a did believer. A couple of, right. right. Even though she did a couple gospel tunes, she was in a right. secular venue. So she was expecting the typical... I know, the typical fan response. And Right. right. And, and justifiably so. And I was standing behind you. Yeah. And I could see her face... I didn't see yours, but I could see her face. And I I knew you had said something along that line to her because I saw her face. Yeah. You got about three quarters into your sentence to her and her face changed. Right. I, yeah. Immediately. The well, as are, mine would, too, when someone right. identifies real, Christ right, in you, right. you, you, you do. Right. Suddenly you don't. It, you're not thinking about the songs you've written. You don't think about your own personal. Right, t- right. You think about thank you. That is the confirmation. You want others to see it's Christ totally, in you. It's a totally different level. Right. And she wasn't expecting it. No. But she was, She was. I believe she was grateful to it. And it, you could see the change on her face. It was It was immediate and it was quite uh, quite effective. Right. I mean, it was, you could see where she, she was moved by what you said. And, right. But it was a, it was a great thing. But yeah, she would be a good one to sit and talk to. I would like that. I just I would wish love she would that. pronounce. Yeah, her and maybe words that'll happen better. someday because she's still you know accessible. Yeah, I just wish she, she would know. pronounce her lyrics better. <laughs> I'm not. You know me. That's one thing a lot of people don't know. I guess about me. I'm a 
big stickler. Well, you love the articulate type. I, and I like to understand people. I know, me too. But And sometimes her <laughs> understandability so, is anyway, not great. Anyway. We're going to get back to but what business is about here. Okay. So, all that to say, we've just mentioned some things there. Did we describe how where we ever came from Mad Magazineology? Ma- no, it does, and it's not necessary to explain because we I are adults and we don't have to no, explain ourselves No, anymore. no, no. I, I think an explanation is in order. <laughs> a brief one. I'll oh, give okay. a brief. Right, I promise okay. it'll be, I'll well, watch the got, clock. You've only got about a minute left. Well, I so won't even take that okay. long. All I right. was a fan as a kid of Mad Magazine. We Yes, and right. I used to read their paperback books that out. <laughs> as well as their their cartoon Of course, not now. Comics, they became really will. raunchy over the years. It's as not I, like it was in the beginning. I did say as a child, and you're eating into my 30 seconds of fame I'm here. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Anyway, I was a fan of it. And, and those of you, most of us have, but those of you who have ever picked up a Mad Magazine comic book or a book know the sarcasm is deep. Needless mm-hmm. to say. And the, the the longstanding joke for many, many years is the cartoon that I referred to in the book where the guy's standing in the room talking on the phone and somebody comes to the door and says, are you on the phone? <laughs> and the guy turns around and says, no, I'm just digging wax out of my ear with this nifty plastic scoop. So right. there is why my wife said, Mad your, Magazine your sarcasm has come. Yes. yes. Yes, there is, there is where it come from and so forth. Well, and anybody that knows you, and, and Jeff is pretty pretty transparent on Facebook, your, your posse, and you have a completely different followship compared to followship. me. Followship. Yeah, a followship of people that what follow you. What a followship. <laughs> well, what and that is a word. If you went to Blistem, you would know that word, see? Well, I didn't anyway. go to Blistem because I wasn't invited. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm saying by that is your tribe or your people or the the ones that pay attention to you when you post things, they know how transparent you are. And what literally what what you present is who you really are. And I will say even better. (laughs) I will say even better. But you said you said earlier in this podcast that I was some I forget how you put it, some kind of spooky dude. Thing that there, I was guarded. That's it. We well, have mean, a little bit of a guarded personality. I've learned the hard way. <laughs> You're we, not all out there like I am. And That's right. it, no, I've learned the hard way. Uh, ask Jeff Pearls about the Dunkin' Donuts. Encounter. I know, and that's okay. Um, and and you've got a few. Maybe we could do well, a podcast someday on, on the- <laughs> stupid things that Duffield Duff- has said <laughs> over right. the years. But so you're, I've it's, learned it's to- pretty much innocent, though. And when you when you when you work oh, your I way into a conversation now. with something, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm my ears are like burning red, going, yes, "Oh no, don't do that, I don't know. do that." <gasps> and then I you know. do, and I know it's very innocent. You're you're I know. you're just trying to be kind and trying to you, you know. How, how long have you, you know, how long have you been on that diet? And then they say, well, I haven't been on a diet in years. Oh, like well, see, like you know, I said, <laughs> I've, I, with age has come guardedness and, so, there, and a anyway. respect for things not to say. <laughs> in ahead. closing, yes. in closing, I just want to say yes. that just because you know about someone yes. does not mean that you know them. No. Okay. So that, I got a couple Knowing about of, versus knowing there is a right. difference. Yes. But John 17, three in, in the gospel of John says, this is eternal life that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That is our mission to know Jesus and to know him personally and not just know about him. Also in Philippians three, eight, It says, more than that, I count all things to be at loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. That's what Paul said. And count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ. And everything everything else doesn't matter. Life and, and, and the stuff that happens and the junk that happens doesn't matter. Knowing about things is not nearly as important as knowing Christ. And then finally, from 1 John 5.20, when I read this, I thought, you know, this is me. It says, we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ, that this is the true God and eternal life. So Jesus is the most wonderful, loving, giving, 
person of the universe, and he wants us to know him in a very personal and affectionate way. There is no doubt. You're not going to change my mind. It's a, a personal relationship with Jesus. The disciples had the opportunity to know Christ 2,000 years ago, but after he resurrected, didn't he ascend into the heavens, leaving us here on earth? Of course he did. So Jesus did indeed ascend to the heavens, but we can still know the Lord personally, and I would even say subjectively today, because he is also the spirit who lives within us. And 2 Corinthians 3.17 says this, and the Lord is the spirit. Pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will live in you and that you'll know him personally today. You know, and physically Christ ascended to heaven and is away from us, but now today, As the Spirit, trust me when I tell you, He's as present as my voice is to your ear right now. He is living, breathing right now in the hearts of Christians around the world. And I pray that Jesus will be real to you and just don't know about Him in 2021. Just don't discard and say, well, I knew about Him and I knew His healings and whatever, and and tell wonderful Bible stories. It's so important, especially now more than ever before, more than ever before to take a personal look and share your personal story. You know, we can use a picture to illustrate the difference between two kinds of knowing. When we look at a photograph of a person, we learn some information about them, you know, on an objective level, you know, their height, their hair color, their eye color, general appearance. And we see the way that they smile, and we may even learn their preference in clothing. But even if we examine the photograph very carefully, gathering as much information as we can from it, We at most only gain an outward, objective knowledge. That's not what I'm talking about. And the Subiquitous Podcast is not, I promise you, as we continue in 2021, this is just not something that we throw out for the visual and through the audio. I want you to personally know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you don't know him today, take the time to say, Father, I ask you to forgive me. And I want you as my personal Savior. I want to live for you, Jesus. I want to love you. And I want to get through all of this difficult time that we have right now because I know there is power in the name of Jesus. Hey, friend, this has been the Subiquitous Podcast, episode number 36. And it's all about knowing. Get on SueDuffield.com. There's all kinds of ways that we can stay connected. Thank you for your support. Thank you for blessing us financially. And thank you most of all for downloading and becoming a subscriber of this ubiquitous podcast. We'll see you next week.